Now the Home Secretary has said he will use all his available powers to prevent her returning to the UK. Shamima Begum was 15 years old when she left her home in Bethnal Green in East London four years ago. Now heavily pregnant with her third child, she says she wants to return. But when I came and I saw that there was, a there was like underground oppression and all this happening, it came as a shock to me, like this is actually happening. Especially I have to think about my baby as well. After my two kids died, I just, now I'm really overprotective of this baby. I'm scared that this baby is going to get sick in this camp. That's why I really want to get back to Britain, because I know it will be taken care of. So that was um, Shamima Begum talking to the Times journalist who got that exclusive interview, which everyone's now talking about. Afshin Shahi is a lecturer in Middle Eastern politics and joins us now. Good morning. Good to morning. You. So, uh, not surprisingly, lots of people are talking about this woman now. She's 19 years old. Um, what do you make then, or what's your take on the situation about her coming back? I mean, just before I specifically talk about her, let's kind of pay a bit of attention to uh, the general uh, picture. Uh, roughly about 1,000 people uh, have gone from Britain to Syria to join so-called uh, the Islamic uh, State. Out of that 1,000, about 20% of them uh, have been killed. Uh, over the last uh, four years in one way or another, and about 40% uh, have already um, returned. Uh, and actually, vast majority of to those people... Yes, and vast majority of those people who have returned, you know, they have expressed some regret and remorse uh, for their involvement with uh, the Islamic State. Which is the difference here. And this is, this is, this is where I was actually uh, going to. And this actually makes this specific situation really, really complicated. There is no doubt that actually Shamima joined the so-called Islamic State when she was only a child. So she was probably a victim uh, of grooming. Uh, and uh, of course, that should not be forgotten. But in 2019, she's already about 19 years old. She's, she's no longer a child, she's an adult. And she doesn't express any regret. She doesn't express any remorse for her involvement with the Islamic State. And the other factor that you need to kind of bear in mind, vast majority of the foot soldiers of the so-called Islamic State kind of left the organization by kind of early 2018. So those people who stayed committed to the organization until now must have been absolutely devoted to the cause and to the idea of the caliphate. That's why this specific case proves to be extremely difficult. And I'm not surprised uh, there is an ongoing debate about it at the moment. I've seen a couple of thoughts. Uh, one is it may be, not be what people want to hear right now, but the context of where she's talking, where this interview took place, may well have a bearing on the message that came out. She's still in a detention camp, and she may have been cautious or careful about how she was talking, about her, how she feels about so-called Islamic states. The other thing I'd like to ask you is, the Home Secretary, again, is saying what people want to hear. I'll do everything in my power to keep her out of this country. I mean, that might be what people want to hear, but he, mm. he doesn't have the power to keep her out of this country, does he? As far as I know, uh, there is there isn't anything legal which can kind of prevent her uh, to uh, to return to the United Kingdom. So it's uh, a kingdom. meaningless... It's it a is, meaningless... It, as far as I know, this is a meaningless uh, statement because she can legally uh, return because under international law, it is illegal uh, to make anybody uh, stateless unless kind of she's a dual national so she can, I suppose, easily revoke uh, her British citizenship. And to prove that she'd done anything wrong, she'd have to have a trial in this country, presumably. Yeah, absolutely. Which means she was back here. Yeah, absolutely. And as, and as I said, I don't think there is any legal mechanism in place to physically prevent her to return to the United what Kingdom. What about when the United States, Donald Trump uh, accuses the UK of being soft and says, you know, if it had any IS fighters or IS allied um, people, it would send them to Guantanamo Bay? I mean, I don't think uh, kind of the British approach or the general uh, European approach have been uh, necessarily uh, soft. But when you're dealing with a very multifaceted and multidimensional uh, problem, like what we have seen uh, in the Middle East over the last uh, uh, few years, you need to have a very sophisticated way of uh, dealing with it. Now we're dealing with kind of hundreds and hundreds of people going from different backgrounds to, to Syria and Iraq to join, the United, uh, to join uh, uh, kind of ISIS. And a lot of actually these uh, people were simply kids. People like Shamima left the country when she was kind of barely 15 years know, old. Do we know what kind of role she would have played 
in terms of strategy? I mean, obviously, she she mm. was the, she's lost two children. She's now pregnant with the third. Um, in terms of what people say is, I don't want her back in this country. She she's not loyal to this country. What threat could she be, or what what how much involvement would she have had? Do women have? It is extremely difficult uh, to find out what specific role she had during her stay uh, in the, in Syria. But given the fact that she had a very high profile, certainly uh, in in Britain, maybe she was primarily used as as an instrument for propaganda mm. and basically recruit more and more uh, teenagers uh, and people uh, going uh, from from the United Kingdom. But vast majority of uh, women who uh, kind of fled, who left uh, the country and joined uh, the Islamic State, you know, they primarily fulfilled the function of uh, being a kind of uh, wives of uh, foreign fighters. So I doubt it in terms of a strategy, uh, she kind of played a very important and defining role uh, for the so-called Islamic State. Ashley, thank you very much. Ashley Shahi is a senior lecturer in Middle East Politics, University of Bradford. Thank, thank you, you for your time this morning. It's coming up to 25 minutes past seven. Thanks for watching. You're joining us on Breakfast. John Maguire is out and about in the wilds of Dorset. It's beautiful out there. 